The body of the femur, also known as the shaft of the femur, is bowed anteriorly, which contributes to its weight-bearing capacity. Extending along the posterior surface of the body of the femur is a broad ridge known as the linear aspera, which translates to rough line, perfectly describing this structure. The linear aspera divides the posterior surface of the femur into medial and lateral halves. It consists of medial and lateral lips, with a narrow intermediate zone that extends between them. The linear aspera functions as an attachment site for many important muscles of the thigh. It provides an origin or proximal attachment for the vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and the short head of the biceps femoris muscle. It is also an insertion or distal attachment for the adductor brevis, longus, and magnus muscles, and finally acts as an attachment site for both the medial and lateral femoral intermuscular septa. The linear aspera terminates proximally by merging with the pectineal line and gluteal tuberosity and inferiorly as it divides into the medial and lateral supracondylar lines, all of which we will look at now. The gluteal tuberosity is a bony ridge which extends in a supralateral direction from the lateral lip of the linear aspera towards the greater trochanter. It acts as an attachment site for the gluteus maximus as well as the adductor magnus and minimus muscles. Extending proximally from the medial lip of the linear aspera is the pectineal line, which extends in a superomedial direction towards the lesser trochanter. As its name suggests, the pectineal line forms an attachment site for the pectineus. Next is the spiral line, one of the lesser known landmarks of the femur. It can be described as a continuation of the intertrochanteric line, which we saw earlier, that courses or spirals just below the lesser trochanter from anterior to posterior, towards the medial lip of the linear aspera. It provides a proximal attachment point for the vastus medialis muscle, and sometimes also the iliopsoas muscle. The spiral line is often confused with the pectineal line due to its proximity with it. Moving distally, the medial and lateral lips of the linear aspera diverge once again to form the medial and lateral supracondylar lines. The medial supracondylar line extends from the medial lip of the linear aspera to the adductor tubercle. It acts as a distal attachment site for the vastus medialis and adductor magnus muscles. The lateral supracondylar line arises as an inferior continuation of the lateral lip of the linear aspera and is the more pronounced of the two supracondylar lines. It provides an attachment for the plantaris muscle and the short head of the biceps femoris muscle. The popliteal surface of the femur is the smooth triangular area between the medial and lateral supracondylar lines. It contributes to the floor of the popliteal fossa and functions as an attachment site for the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.